بارك الله فيكما إن شاء الله الله will accept your umrah it's nice to begin the marriage with an act of worship together but to go on a honeymoon neither you will have honey nor will you see the moon and we come to the towards the end really the topic which I wanted to give much time for do I have time I hope I have time taking pictures man you know taking pictures is a big 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 calamity that has engulfed the Muslim Ummah it, it, it is now it, there's no stopping to it now the the issue of taking camera pictures has become so prevalent that Umrah and Hajj are nothing but Hollywood you go you go to the Mecca you go to Mecca you go to the Haram and see 50% of the people are posing be before the Kaaba and their friends are taking pictures while people are walking by in the background the whole thing in Hajj don't ask about Hajj poor new Muslims the poor new Muslims who just enter into Islam they take into an environment of pictures and pictures the whole thing becomes entertainment for them the idea of getting closer to Allah through the actual Hajj is almost non-existent because we have turned it into what Hollywood or if you're from other countries Bollywood it doesn't matter what you call it it's the same idea now the issue of taking pictures is an issue where the scholars have differed and I really wish to share with you something that is very important this particular evening many of our brothers practicing brothers they follow the position of Sheikh bin Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala Sheikh bin Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala one of the great scholars who Allah I make Allah my witness that I love him for the sake of Allah from the bottom of my heart and ask Allah to place him in the highest point in Firdaus Sheikh bin Uthameen you know what can we say about Sheikh bin Uthameen Rahimahullah ta'ala, the Shaykh of the Shaykh during this era along with Shaykh al-Albani, Shaykh bin Baz. He held a position which many people misunderstood about the idea of taking pictures with a camera. Now let me explain to you. There's no difference of opinion that you know, sculpturing images is haram and hand drawing is haram as well. Drawing them with the hand, there's no dispute among the ulama, the, the considered ulama that this is prohibited. Where is the difference? photographic pictures the ones that you take with the camera the Sheikh Rahimahullah said someone sent him a question said yeah Sheikh this is Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasir al-Barraq Wafaqahullah he said I have read the fatwa of Sheikh bin Uthameen regarding making images in his 12th volume in his book of fatwa and I was confused about some things he said he said the photographic pictures the camera pictures are not really taken pictures yet it is not allowed to keep them for memory for for purposes of just you know looking at them whenever you wish to remember something so uh, you know what, what's up with this what is your comment on that the sheikh said whoever looks into the uh, closely to the statements of sheikh bin Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala concerning making images uh, he will realize the following that the sheikh rahimahullah ta'ala the 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 picture wasn't clear for him the picture, the, the reality of taking pictures with the camera was not really clear for him. Meaning he did not visualize it or he did not perceive it correctly. This is why you will find in his speech some things would seem contradictory from someone like him, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. But the problem is that the people of desires have taken this fatwa as their uh, scapegoat to go and do whatever they want. This is their excuse and their outlet to go do whatever they want. So you find pictures and images on newspapers and magazines and all over the place. But the Sheikh Rahimahullah in his 12th volume from pages 311 to 327, he spoke about this area or this issue from three different angles. Number one, Hukmu Taswir, ruling on taking pictures. Second, Iqtina Aswar, keeping pictures. Thirdly, another ila Aswar, looking at pictures. Now, the bottom line, the conclusion of the Sheikh's statement was the following. The permissible pictures which you may take, the ones that are permissible, is that of Jamadat and Nabatat. Non-living things. And trees, plants, sun, moon, whatever that doesn't have a soul, you may draw it, you may sculpture it, and you may uh, uh, you know, take a picture with the camera. No problem. That's halal. Allowed. The second kind, Muharram, the one that you draw with your hand. And the third one, the one which there's a difference about, which is taking pictures of living things with the camera. Now the 
what you, what you basically deduce from the statement of the Shaykh is that it is allowed to use the camera unless it leads to something haram. And he used the following as evidences. He said, first, taking pictures with a camera is not the action of the person himself, like the one who draws. When you draw, you are the one who is what? Engaged in drawing and using the pens and the colors and so forth. But the one who takes a picture is just a pressing a button. So the Shaykh said he is not really considered to be, it's not considered to be the action of the one who is responsible in Islam. Secondly, it is not considered to be, you know, competing with Allah in his quality of creating. Which is one of the reasons why taswir is haram. Mudahati khalq Allah. You try to create and it's Allah Azza wa Jal al-Musawwir. The one who forms and formulates and fashions the human beings. Uh, and the Shaykh gave an example about documents. Like when someone writes a document with his hand, then you make a copy of it. He said the copy is not like the, the original. And you cannot say that this is the person's handwriting. This is a copy of his handwriting. And when you take a picture, you're taking a copy of the person. You're not actually drawing a person. This was his argument, rahimahullah ta'ala. The Shaykh said, and we respond to that by saying, First, the tasweer with the camera, with the camera, is from the action of the one doing it. Because it is, it is considered to be taking images, both linguistically and according to the norms. You call the machine, it's a photography machine. You call to the one who's using it, a, one, a photographer, right? From photograph. And you call the final thing what? A photograph. So linguistically, we're using the term tasweer on all of that. So how can you say that it is not the responsibility of the one taking the image? This is refuted in this fashion. Secondly, it is considered to be mudahat, competing with Allah within his creation, because it is happening whether you intend it or not. The outcome is that this is what Allah created. And the Shaykh said, and this is not the same. You are not copying an image in a sense where the image is no longer there. You are actually depicting a moment and the picture is not like the real thing. It's not like you're taking the real thing and you're putting it in the image where the real thing doesn't exist anymore. The real thing is still there and the picture is still there. So the idea is ingrained even if you do not notice it. And finally the Shaykh uh, mentioned, uh, and he said this is why the person who takes picture is able to change it and modify it by enlarging it, right? or making it smaller by widening it, widening, widening it or narrowing it. He can do any changes to the actual image. And you go see the passport pictures of the Photoshop. They change things for you. They make you look you know, better than what you really look. Uh, and this is what? Can you do this to a real person? No. So the idea then, which you know, the Shaykh rahimahullah was arguing, was actually not very strong. And finally, and importantly, which is the part that those who follow their desires don't, don't accept. The Shaykh Rahimullah did not allow for you to keep pictures for memory. And he mentioned that in the strongest words that you cannot keep pictures. Forget about the way you take the pictures. Keeping the pictures is not allowed. He used the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. Then the other hadith that the most severely punished people on the day of judgment are those who try to compete with Allah and His creation. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, Verily the people of these images, the people who make these images, they will be punished on the day of judgment. It will be said to them, give life to that which you created. They will never be able to give life. Blow the soul into that image which you make. They will not be able to do so. And the Shaykh had explained elaborately that it is not allowed to take these pictures except for necessity. We all agree on that. All the ulama agree. If there's a criminal and you need to have an image of him, whether it is hand drawn, by the way, or taken with a picture to notify the people about a criminal that needs to be uh, you know, caught, then you may do so. If you need an identification purposes, driver's license, passport, iqamah,